started it off, started it off, Ryan. What you did, what you did <laughs> last weekend? <laughs> I wasted two days playing an event that I eventually bubbled, and it felt very bad because I was also coming off my COVID vax, the second one. So I was running a fever Friday, woke up su or Saturday, played my first round at round three. I'll set the VIP by. Let's go. Um, felt horrible and uh, made a wrong call in an Ash Impern play, and that cost me the match. So I then got off, took some medicine, got a Red Bull, and then rallied the rest of the rounds. Um, yeah, very tragic, 36 plays. Playing pure zoo, though. What was your finishing record? It was 9-2, so 27 points. So if you check 14th through 47th, we all had the same record, just tiebreakers kind of screwed me. Unfortunate. It really is. Um, what did you play? I played pure zoo. But Dryden's banned. It, yeah, it's a, it's a, it's very bad. Um, Dryden facilitated a lot of things in the deck. Dryden facilitated a six material zoos. Dryden facilitated first turn interactions. Dryden facilitated being able to put a Zeus on board with a Dryden. Dryden facilitated even just going first. So, so Dryden was the problem. Yeah, I think after we got F Zero coming out, I think it makes sense Dryden's gone, but. Uh, my friend Javi, he got me on Pure Zoo, and I never felt more comfortable with a deck, at least in this format, than playing Pure Zoo, so I definitely appreciate that. Um, it was very unfortunate, though, because I did grind essentially all of June playing Pure Zoo, so I didn't really have enough time going into this event to change up decks, at least in uh, July and so on. But, yeah, without further ado, yeah, like I said... Yeah, how the deck wins, man. Yeah, yeah like, exactly. You, <laughs> you don't need me rambling or anything. We want to see how you bubble with yeah. Pure Zoo. I know it's such a hot topic, but, yeah, let's get into it. Um, ten Zoo monsters, then obviously three tanky and one barrage. But, yeah, Thoroughblade, um, Whiptail. And then three Ram Ram, one Rat. Um, there's not really much to say about these cards. Like interactions, like with this. Like I had a time where um, a guy schismed, and I had this on the field, and uh, I chalk and I summon. He changed schism, summon window, and I was like, okay, fine. I'll attack with uh, chalk and I equip this, banish the window, make plays that way. Um, so it's definitely good. Thoroughblade being the best one, Ram being second best, Rat being kind of mediocre because I never really wanted to send with this unless I knew I could kill next turn with the best Monado combo. So like I would maybe send like the Thoroughblade. You said combo. Yeah, well, I mean, it's like. Combo and Pure Zoo, let me, let me hear it. Well, no, it's just like someone a Thoroughblade chalking on this back. Because, like, if you're able to attack with this directly, then they're at 6,400. Then, like, next turn, you can just make a Chalk Nine, summon this back, make Vespinato, then attack with the Zeus, and that's 7,100. So it's going to kill him. No Bunny Blast, no Rooster. I, I somewhat think about going back to Bunny Blast. It doesn't facilitate the purpose of serving uh, as, like, a pseudo Broad Bull. But there's a lot of times if someone does make me go first or I end on um, just summoning back like Ram Ram, I could essentially just summon the Bunny Blast back if I have another Zoom Engrave. And it could just, like, if it dies, I could just add back Thoroughblade or add back any of the other ones. So, and it's also potentially good, at least playing against uh, Sky Striker, because they'll have to waste it on the normal summon of the Zoom Monster. Yeah. They'll have to waste it on the Bunny Blast. So it, it's definitely something that could happen, but. I don't know. Right I, I, now you're pretty content with 10. Yeah, I'm pretty content with 10. And then following that is just the um, 3 tanky and 1 barrage. Yeah. <laughs> 3 tanky and 1 barrage. Um, I'm happy. Like, there's there's nothing to say about these cards. Like, I wish this was at 3. I wish this was at 4. Like, it's absurd. So, it's um, 14 zoos. Um, I did find myself sometimes just not having a zoo to play, which was really unfortunate because it is 14. Um, and then also on the flip side of that, I would open up hands where it would be, you know, four zoo. And I would be like, this is going to be a really... That happened in my round five against Virtual World. I'm like, I think I lose. Did you lose? Yeah, I did. It was um, when you're playing a normal summon deck and they just go right Geki break on every single normal summon. It's uh, pretty hard to play. But... As you could probably figure out from how Dryan's banned and my feelings on Dryan being banned, I did play a going second build. So I played Triple Ash. Um, that's a staple, no real comment. I played Triple Imperm. Uh, I was playing Valor. I'm just too scared of talent, so I like to have uh, you know a card that can just play around that without having to potentially activate the monster effect. Or if I want to have this on field with Zeus, and I am scared of talents, I can hold the Zeus and wait till later so I don't just like Imperm something, or I Zeus, or I, I don't know. Um, just kind of rambling at this point. It is a uh, wind out. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Unless you're bad like me and you imperm the Alistair. And then they chain El Shadal, and you could have ashed the Alistair instead. So that's nearly here, not there. It's all good. Yeah, exactly. Um, an absurd Yu Gi Oh card, D Shifter. Uh, I sided for so long, and I just said, why don't I just main it? This card annihilates anything in the meta. Um, 
I'll, I'll talk more about this as I get through the other hand traps, but finishing off is um, two Ghost Bell and two Nibiru. I played two Ghost Bell because when I had three, I felt I had to really work to get it out of my hand. And the logic was I just wanted to see it some of the time, not all the time. So it kind of held up. I When I saw it, it was pretty good. There was only a couple times where it just kind of stood in my hand. Same logic with Nibiru. Like at one point, I even uh, chalk and I back a Ram Ram so I could just uh, tribute the two monsters for Nibiru against uh, Sky Shark. Because I was like, I just need to keep attacking. Because the longer the game goes for them, it's just, it's, it becomes unwinnable. But. So the logic with this deck was, at least for the going second build, if I could see at least two hand traps, or maybe just one blowout hand trap, I'll be able to play through. Like, I'll be able to at least put a Zeus on board and control the tempo of the game. So D-Shifter definitely did that, where a lot of the times when I would activate and resolve this card, it would just, they wouldn't be able to play. Or they would keep trying to play, and like one of my opponents, he went as far as to summon a Herald of Perfection, not knowing that he couldn't activate the effect. So that was really fun. Um, yeah, I was very happy with the hand trap lineup. I don't think I would change anything. And that's No. I, I play Desires, and I don't really want to mess with that kind of ratio. And um, with sometimes how some of the hand traps can break or just having multiple zoos, um, I don't really want to risk the driver. It can be, I don't know. Maybe I need to test some more, maybe I need to think about it more, but at least right now, probably not. Um, probably the weakest card in the deck was Lightning Storm. It never really came up or did much of anything, actually. Like, the one time where I had it where I was kind of excited to hit two back or eat Judgment, so it didn't even matter. Uh, <laughs> so, like, maybe my sentiment would be different about the card if I played more trap decks. I only, thank God, I only played one Striker, which this deck does have kind of a difficult time playing its Striker. It makes it a little bit easier if you are when to die roll because most Striker lists want to play going second, so you can force them to go first and there'll be a card down. And if you have the Ash for the Shizuku, then there's like a couple of turns behind. So th this card definitely was lackluster. You can definitely pay without it. Um, and, like also I'm separating the cards if you can see like this is the engine this is the hand traps these are just kind of supplemental cards that I chose myself um, desires it it's desires there's not really much to say I will say this though about the card is when I would activate it I would always be kind of happy when I would check my bench because if I've activated this card and I haven't seen this card yet then you never want to see this card because this card's like it's like Cyframe Drop. Actually, it's worse than Cyframe Driver because Cyframe Driver is still useful. Like, this card is literally a blank. So, if I would activate Desires um, and I haven't seen this card, I would check my banish. I would see like one or two of these and I'd be like, thank God. So, it it does more than just like, you know, drawing two cards, even though sometimes I would just draw like two tanky or like two zoo monsters, even though I added zoo monsters in my hand. Um, so, definitely happy with Desires. Definitely keeping it at three. Um, Chalice, this kind of goes into the um, Lightning Storm kind of situation is, in theory, it was very, very good, but in practice, it didn't really come up as much as I wanted. Like, I had a lot of answers for um, Tri Brigade, and I had a lot of answers for um, Shadal Invoked, which, like, this card was really good against Shadal Invoked, because, like, say if you felt, they said a monster and you were scared of the monster and you didn't really want to attack into it with Zeus, you can just face check the face down monster and Chalice and damage step. If it's like a dragon or a uh, squamata, so it was really good. And then the main reason this card was coming in, or being main decked, was for Tri Brigade. So when they um, you go battle phase, they'll typically just revolt right there. And then you could just uh, Chalice the Link 4, and then just <laughs> make... Do you like prefer, prefer that card over uh, Forbidden Droplets? Yeah, I a lot of the cards, or a lot of the times, you, you can't really afford to discard. It's kind of the same logic as like Twin Twister, where you need typically all your cards to play. Um, even though you do have a one card engine, you don't really want to be like disc. Like maybe if you have like D Shifter, that's an obvious situation where you don't mind discarding. But otherwise, you don't really want to have um, uh, cards that's like an inherent neg one, even though it is stopping your opponent's plays. Twin Twisters and, uh, you know. So you're okay with one for one thing as long as you yeah. get a hit. Because the whole entire idea of zoos, essentially, at least right now, is promoting a simplified game state. And when you're in simplified game state, one for one thing is typically okay. Um, as long as it's actually facilitating its one for one purpose. Which it was when it would happen. Um, yeah, carrying on. I played these blowout cards, which they were absurd. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, we know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So, 
there's not really much to say. Like, I'm, I'm not really going to harbor on this. There there were times, like, maybe if it doesn't really make sense going second, I'll go into it, um, where, like, the logic was if I played X amount of hand traps, which I played 13, I could stun them enough to where if I were to have one of these cards in my hand, I could just set it or activate it, and it would just make it even harder for them to play or harder for them to carry on. Exactly. So, like, if I pair this with a Zeus, like, I'm not going to be Zeusing my board. They knew that, but they're not going to be able to play because of these cards. So, in my last matchup, I, like, um, I Zeused his board, and then it came back to me, and I top deck uh, Fissure, and I didn't have another way to summon another Zeus, or even, like, summon on top of my Zeus with enough materials of Zeus again, so I just activated Fissure and attacked with Zeus, and it was enough, like, he couldn't make plays, so D Fissure's absurd. Um, another card that may seem weird in Logic is Psalm Strike. This card was still really good because it's the same logic as these blowout cards. If I can slow down the game enough, which the format is already pretty slow in itself, I could potentially set a strike and then summon a Zeus, which is like almost like God mode. Like it's like the most amount of confidence I have with Zeus because I'll let them face check into the Zeus with everything they have. Like I won't like, they'll summon monsters thinking it was Zeus. And I'd be like, yeah, that's fine. And they'll keep going and they, like, they're not really sure of how far they can get. So they just keep testing the waters, testing the waters. And then we get to the point where Zeus is actually being threatened. I'll strike it. And then they put so much resources into it. And then my Zeus still has two detached, yeah, uh, two effects. So this card's still really good. I'm, I'm happy with the logic. I was talking to an unknown player the night before who shall not be named. <laughs> Um, where it essentially was a coin flip between these two because he said I should play three chalice and I was really harboring on Psalm Strike. The coin flip landed on choosing chalice, by the way. We ignore coin flips, so we stuck with three strikes. But I was very happy. Exactly. I was very happy with it and the logic supported it. So, But that's the main deck. Um, sorry, I kind of got lost in so like I said, these these are the supplemental cards. Obviously, you can change these. I'll stick by desires, so I'll put that off to the side. But these are the supplementals. Um, I say those are mandatory, almost needed, but the rest you can change from there. Sorry if this is getting very long, by the way. I always have a lot to say. Best Hokage. What? Cut. <laughs> Cut it. Cut it. <laughs> um, anyway. So on to the extra deck. Uh, one also, this card is horrific. I never summoned it. I've been playing this deck for over a month now. I've never, I've never summoned this. This might as well be the token I pass by going through into my extra deck. Like, it's so bad. Like, some people say, it, oh, it's good for the contacting C. I mean, if they have it, then I guess, sure, I don't think that card's actually real. And if they do have it, I do play, like, two outs of contacting C. Which, I mean, if I'm seeing Barrage, I'm already, like, pretty good but like the chalice can stop it so i don't i don't really feel the need to play this card it'll probably become uh f0 and then um i might cut the third zeus for the other f0 but moving on um the zeus so i'll section them out by the important ones um these are essentially at this point just names and extra materials for zeus chalk and is really good for just pushing for game and putting a or applying more pressure onto the board um borbo's borbo there's not much ever to say about that card yeah. <laughs> Moving on. Um, triple Zeus, like I said. Playing three Zeus, it, it never actually came up, but it was nice to have. I'm going to have to test with the um, third one to see if it would come up. Or test with F0 to see if the third one would actually be needed. But uh, two cards I was happy with so much. Or I guess only one card. Uh, Vespinato. Like, there was a lot of times where I would run out. Like, I would use both copies in a single game. Um, because... It is kind of the same logic where I'm able to Chalkanine back a Ram Ram, then put Vespinado on top of the Chalkanine. So it's like, if the Ram Ram is to die, it'll summon back a Zoo. If the Vespinado is to die, it'll summon back a Zoo. If they don't kill this, I attack, put a Zeus on top. And then it's kind of facilitating the same idea as Bunny Blast, where I'm almost guaranteeing myself another Zoo for next turn. So I was always really happy with Vespinado and how it performed. There was a lot of times where I would like, not a lot of times, but there was one time uh, specific where I did like Nibiru him and his uh, the Nibiru token had 300 defense. So I had uh, the Nibiru token, Zeus on field still, and then I summoned Vespinato, pierced into the token, attack for 6k with that, so it was game. So very happy with Vespinato. Um, yeah, moving on to the side deck. Um, three Crow. I chose this over Cycle Reader because I want something to better suit the. Um, Sky Striker matchup, which 
I did sigh this in, but I never saw it. So it was really unfortunate that I just never saw it. I think I saw it for the first time round three and I hit an invocation. But I was losing that game because he had uh, Winda and Mechaba on field, so it is what it is. Um, same idea, or not the same idea with that card, but uh, Cosmic. I wanted something else just for Sky Striker and maybe any other like random matchup that could happen. Um, three Dark Ruler. I I like Dark Ruler just in the sense of it can be your sixth card and you can still play. I actually didn't really side this in. It never really came up that often. I never really had to play against. Yeah, it. I, I still believe in the 2019 Tim promos as like the best cards ever to grace Yu-Gi-Oh. So like I, I main deck D Shifter, I main deck Nibiru, I started Dark Ruler. Like these are the most disgusting cards ever printed. Um, one macro. Shout out to my round eight opponent who uh, I beat game one and I won the dice roll, so I had him go first. So he knew I was trying to go second, and I beat him game one and he has me go first game two and I'm like thinking he will so I side in this card and um, different dimension ground and I open this in pure order and some <laughs> strike <laughs> like I felt so bad for the man there was no chance he was playing Trizu and I just it was it was a rough time for him and I'm very very sorry but um, yeah it's um it's a better D Fissure obviously because you can have impure order with it D Fissure obviously conflicts with impure order um, you have to turn it off to be able to have order up but yeah and then two anti spell this came up against Sky Striker no one else really uh, red reboot I cited or I kept it in the uh, side deck just because I was still scared of like trap decks like I cited this against like Trizu just to maybe hit the revolt or I don't know like a another like psalm strike because i know they were playing it but yeah um that completes the list i i think i was pretty happy with a lot of the card choices like the only thing i would really consider changing was the um lightning storms the asa perhaps the chalice i'll probably keep the chalice though definitely the lightning storms are probably one of the weaker cards but um yeah any other questions or anything any changes you would make to the deck at all? Extra deck, like that you know for sure that you want to do. As awesome. Soon as awesome, 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 gone. That uh, card is useless. And what were your matchups like? My matchups were pretty good. The day two, they were just all blowouts. Like, I drew pretty so so most of day one. Then day two, my deck finally kicked in, and a lot of the logic was showing because, like, I, I never went to a game three day two. It was like, huh? Blowouts. Absolute blowouts. And, like, it kind of finished with that same tempo uh, round eight. Yeah. And then a couple of the games, they were rough where I would draw, like, multiple zoos, but there were blowouts in between. But I still had to go to some game threes. Um, I think the deck still performed very well. And Zeus is a card to be reckoned with. What do you think uh, F0 did for the deck? See, I'm not really too sure because you don't want to go first with the deck and putting in two names to actually make F0 is really expensive for the extra deck because like you don't want to have the issue where you're out of Zeus. If you're out of Zeus, you're out of Zeus. So it's, you know, it's all contingent on being able to have enough Zeus to keep playing. And Dryden facilitated F0 in such a clean way because you'd summon the Chalk and I. Yeah, exactly. You you just summon Ram Ram would just summon back the Chalk and I. You wouldn't have to invest more Zeus. So I, I still think F0 is a card worth trying just because it is kind of absurd. It's a 3K body that can't be destroyed by battle card effects, the game monster effects, and even potentially take, take it. it. Yeah. But it's like also the same time when I have access to Zeus, why do I need anything else? So it's it'll definitely be tested, but it, yeah. So I mean Congratulations on the bubble. <laughs> That's the nice way to put it. You tried, you know, you did what you had to do. Yeah. Not your fault. Any shout outs? Absolutely. Go ahead. Um, Javi for turning me on to the deck. Uh, Lewis always best testing partner. Um, Sackiest. He, he, puts, he puts the fear of God into me. He lets me know that I probably should never play Yu-Gi-Oh! And I'm garbage. <laughs> and then I go to events and I'm like, wait, no one plays like him. <laughs> Um, all the homies and Team OG. I love all y'all. I love playing with y'all. Um, literally no one else, actually. So that's all the shout-outs. Oh, we got FIBO. Don't forget. Oh, FIBO! Uncle Johnny yep. FIBO. Always FIBO. Oh, yeah. Always FIBO. That's it. <laughs> that's He's different. Funny.